Gemini Journalist fans, welcome to the Gemini Journalist and thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to join me as I read and sway you away with the magical readings of works of myself and the works of other authors. Now, if you are indeed a first timer joining us here on my channel for the very first time, a very special welcome to you. Please ensure that you hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on because you do not want to miss out on all the good things that are happening here on the Gemini Journalist. Now, we missed out on good things last week. I was a bit under the weather, not 100% as we speak, but definitely, definitely, I am not letting that get the best of me. Still trying to pull through, so rather than missing out again, I have decided to just do a voiceover until I am feeling myself again. So, definitely, we are still featuring on the channel here. Not by chance, God answers prayers, and that one is from Marlene McPherson. Now, if you have not yet checked out the interview that I did with Marlene, I invite you all to come on down, check that one out. It's, it's you can just go ahead and tap on the playlist. I have a playlist with Marlene McPherson. You can definitely go ahead and check out her works and the interview there. All right. So, without much delay, we are currently down to chapter five. Here we go. Matt came the following Saturday. His vibrancy had returned, and this was evident in his voice on the telephone and in his manner during the, that visit. Although they had spoken on the phone during the week, Catherine had no idea that he had consoled himself with the view the, that the events of the last few days were all God's timing. It was at this point that he told her he had come one day and had introduced himself to her mother. She was taken aback. Imagine, he went to her mother without her knowing. What a bold step. Catherine was happy to hear because her mother was hard to please. Her mother's silence on the matter meant that he had won her heart. As they chatted, Catherine observed that he was always smartly dressed in long-sleeved silk shirts, dark pants, and matching socks and shoes, so she wondered how he would look in casual garb. Do you wear polo shirts? she asked. Yes, he answered. The following week, Catherine was startled. Matt was dressed into a gold-colored polo shirt. This gave him a glow, and his voice was rich and welcoming. He aimed to please her, and lost no time in doing what was necessary. Every weekend visit was different, with varying elements of surprise, so it became special days for both of them. One Saturday, he came very early, and was able to see her at work in the kitchen. She did not mind as their talk lightened the chores and both enjoyed the day. For the time, he accepted a meal that included men's casserole, much to her delight. Previously, he accepted only a glass of water. He was so comfortable that he offered to have his meal in the kitchen instead of in the dining room. Catherine's excitement ahead of the following Saturday knew no bounds. She had made a gorgeous floral dress for the date. Matt waited while, the, while she dressed, then they headed towards the bus stop. As she walked, she stole a glance at him. Matt appeared to be younger than she. She stifled a moan and felt hot. 
her pace quickened so that they were no longer abreast of each other. The possibility of his being a younger suitor came as a dart to her. What am I doing with myself? Will this last? She thought. The bus came and both went inside. There were but a few passengers because it was a public holiday. Quickly, she found a seat near a window while he tendered the fare. He joined her and tried fruitlessly to engage her in conversation. She answered in monosyllables. They arrived at the University of the West Indies, alighted from the bus and strolled towards the theatre where they had planned to share the evening. The rich murals depicting our African heritage and our Caribbean unity seemed to be in utter darkness as she passed by without uttering a word to make her favourite conversation. The play featured notable Jamaican actress Faye Ellington. Patrons all around them laughed, the heads off, but Catherine remained sober. Matt was at a loss. When they left the house, Catherine was in good spirits. He glanced superstitiously at her, wondering at her shift in mood. Intermission came. Do you want some nuts? asked Matt. No, said Catherine. What about a gum? suggested Matt. I'll take nuts, she said in an effort to end the prodding. She was relieved when she finally reached home. Matt returned to the Williams. She shut her bedroom door and threw herself across the bed. The evening was good except the age concern. During the following week, she wrote Matt a long letter asking a number of questions. During the wait, the landline was the link between them. The main day for any discourse was Saturday. Early Saturday morning, she called. Hello, Matt. Glad to hear your voice. You were on my mind, and I was about to call you when the phone rang, he said. Great. This is a coincidence. I am glad to hear you, but I have a concern, she said. What is it, he asked. My, uh... Before she could finish calling the word, he interjected. Oh, no problem. That is okay, he said. Matt, I asked a number of questions in my letter, and I want you to answer. Okay, I will answer all your questions, he said. Catherine had thought it wise to verbalize her feelings in the letter, but Matt's responses were beginning to comfort her already. Maya Angelou's words be became real at that point. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. See you soon. Bye, he said. Bye, Catherine said and hung up. Catherine was beside herself. This is the Lord. A voice spoke softly to her heart. The following week, she was kept busy marking examination scripts and filling out report cards. She also managed to find time indulging in sewing, a hobby that she enjoyed. While sewing, one evening, the postman came and a letter was brought to her. She hastily pushed the dress aside and opened it. It was an answer to prayer. One of her prayer requests was for a short courtship, no more than a year. Clearly, God was showing signs of approval for this relationship. Matt's letter read. Dear Catherine, how are you doing? Fine, I suppose. I received your letter and was glad to read that you enjoyed yourself at the fiesta. I share with you the joys of that event. Catherine, I am very honest with you in answering your questions in the same order you have asked them, and I hope my answers will satisfy you. I do not have a girlfriend now. I had in the past, even though it is history to me. This is one of the things that make up life, history or memories of the past. The youngest relationship was severe when she migrated to the States and wanted us to get married. 
Frankly, I would have married her because she is a nice girl. But the reason for not doing this, she had two children, boys, at the ages of 10 and 11 years. If she had one child, preferably a daughter, she would have trapped me into doing this. Catherine, I prize my salvation dearly because it caused the sacrificial blood of the Son of God. I will not do anything to sever my relationship with God. I have placed my needs before the Lord and I believe Him to meet every need. You see, He has promised to do it and He fulfills every promise. Of course, I believe Him for a wife, one that will hold my hands up when they are weary. I know, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain, except the watchman watches the city, watch in vain. I meet many challenges in my life every day. To God be the glory. To survive over 60 ladies at the workplace is a challenge. This puts me on a chalk line to walk. I am walking and looking at Jesus. Praise his name. I hope to settle down late 87, 88. Next year, I will be 27 years. And I, walking this way with the Lord, would not like to continue living singly. I have not realized my goals as yet, but I will wait upon the Lord and live a day at a time. Actually, Catherine, I have been living on my own a long time now. I only share a kitchen right now. To make myself more comfortable, I shall be purchasing a component set in February. I really like comfort, and I even feel like it's too much. God's people have to be. One of the things I would like to do is to acquire a lot, even an empty one. Every man needs his own place. I must confess all my girlfriends in the past were older women than I. Catherine, I must tell you, I am always attracted to older women. I feel more comfortable with them and we level on the same plane. I feel comfortable talking about you. I do not see the reason I shouldn't. You see, you are a wonderful person. I hope to see you soon. God bless until we speak on the phone. Matt. He propped up the letter on the machine cabinet, settled more comfortably in the chair, and read it as though it were chalkboard with information to be transcribed. She observed it all and pondered what was written. She recalled Mary's experience as recorded in Luke chapter 2 verse 19. Mary had kept all the things spoken by the shepherds and pondered them in her heart. You see, Catherine admired Mary and often drew parallels between Mary's experiences and her own. Saturday arrived, this one with high expectations. And... She was right. He entered the kitchen and stood before the table while she faced the kitchen sink. She turned to face him. A million emotions swirled in his eyes as he took her in his arms. As she settled into his arms, time stood still. He tilted her chin ever so gently, inviting her lips to meet his. The kiss spoke of deeper promises hinted of a deeper sweetness and left her almost breathless. Just then, the Concord roared over the building in its maiden flight to Jamaica. They looked at each other and laughed. What an omen. This was their first kiss. That Concord was a bird of good omen. As Christians, we cannot be doing this often, as it may lead, Catherine suddenly cautioned, Matt looked intently at her, a split second more. Then, removing his right hand, placed the index finger on her lips. As if by magic, both broke the embrace. Matt asked suddenly, How do you feel about me? I love you, Matt, Catherine responded. Both glowed and eyed each other with renewed joy.
All right, awesome, wonderful, 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 wonderful things as romance comes your way, Christian style. So, Not By Chance, that's God Answers Prayer, book one by Marlene McPherson. Again, we are down to chapter five. For those of you who have not yet tapped that subscribe button, ensure you hit subscribe. Turn the notification bell on because you don't want to miss out on all the good stuff that will be happening here on uh, the Gemini Journalist. Now down below in the description, definitely you can go ahead and check out the links to Marlene's um, networking site. You can definitely reach out to her, grab yourself a copy of her work. Once again, that is not by chance. God answers prayers. Also, I have a book that she also sent me. It's a word search puzzle book about Jamaica. Um, you can also reach out to her about that one. It's pretty good. It just gives you basically on each page that you'll be doing your puzzle pieces, your puzzle, your word search um, puzzles. You learn a little something, something about Jamaica as you go along. So definitely, it's really good. Um, I always recommend this one for international viewers, even the Jamaican folks as well. But where it comes down to learning about the culture, I do recommend it for international viewers. So definitely go ahead and check it out reach out to marlene get yourself hooked up with a copy of her work it's beautiful for gifts definitely anybody can read these novels so definitely go ahead and gift someone today now you can definitely go ahead as well and reach out to me on social media and I will be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. If you are an author and you do want me, you do want to participate and have me um, read your work, so you can reach out to me as well. Uh, no problems there. Go ahead and if you have any comments, you can go ahead and drop a comment down below in the description. Remember guys, hit like, hit that share button, go ahead and share the video with your friends, your family. Have them join you as well here on the Gemini Journalist. Have them subscribe, turn that notification bell on because you definitely don't want to miss out on good stuff. Once again, I share my works here. I read the works of other authors as well and I do from time to time share some of my <coughs> culture here on the gemini journalist so without delay uh you guys definitely have yourself a wonderful rest of this tuesday morning you stay blessed and definitely we'll see each other again stay blessed peace out we'll see each other soon take care